Okay guys, so I'm finally able to get back out of the water and finally redo the skipping test for the Team Loose Pro SP Reel. Now I've done this test before a few weeks ago, but I was unsatisfied with the footage. I think the audio was lost somehow. So I'm doing it again. But before we get into that, I wanna show you guys something. Now, a lot of people may look at the spool on the Pro SP and think, you know, that's just way too shallow to do any kind of regular fishing. But let me show you guys something. Now I have this reel spooled up with 12 pound mono. And I'd have to say this pretty thick 12 pound mono as well. And I have the spool tension set to just minimize the side to side play and the brakes dialed down to the number six position. And I have a Lucky Crop Pointer 78 jerk bait tied on. And the reason I'm tying on this pointer and the reason I'm using a jerk bait is because this reel is definitely a reel I could see myself using for jerk baits because it is lightweight and very comfortable to palm. But yeah, let me show you guys something. Okay, so that was probably at least a 40 yard cast and this is how much line is left on the spool. So I have several feet of line left on the spool even after that pretty long cast. Okay, we'll do a couple more casts. So there's another pretty decently long cast and this is how much line is left. And while I'm reeling this, lure in, I will tell you that this is a very, very free casting reel. Typical centrifugal brake sensation where the, where the spool definitely keeps up its speed during the cast. All right, one more. All right, there's how much line is left. So yeah, for smaller top waters, smaller cranks, any kind of a moving bait, maybe half an ounce and under, where you don't need super heavy line, then this Pro SP can definitely handle that with no problem. And if you watched my previous video on this reel, you'll know that this reel happens to be a devastating bait finesse reel as well. But if you haven't watched that video, I'm gonna put the thumbnail up for you guys to look for this in my video list so you can check that out. But now it's time to get to the skipping test. Okay, so I've done a skipping test for two other reels before the SLX DC and the 2020 Tatula SV. And both of those reels were very, very forgiving for a beginner skipper like me. So now let's see if the Lose Pro SP can say the same. Now I have the same lure that I used with those other two reels, the G Crack Spiron, and the same rod, the Shimano Claris crankbait rod, which is a six foot eight, medium, moderate, fast. And I'm leaving the spool tension set to just minimize the side to side play. And I crank the brakes all the way up to the maximum position. Now, if you take a look at this brake dial, you'll see that the numbers are colored either white or orange. And it says skipping in orange. So I'm assuming if your brake dial is set to any of these orange numbers, then you should be good to go for skipping. But let me show you what this reel can do. All right, so that was a pretty weak skip, but it skipped nonetheless. Okay, we're having some uh, overrun here. Now, when I was watching the lose videos with like Andy Montgomery explaining how to use this reel, unfortunately, he didn't really go into detail about, you know, spool tension or brake setting, if I recall. All right, let's do a few more skips. Now this is with me only stopping the spool once the bait stops skipping. So I had a little bit of overrun there. All right, so max brakes. Seems like it's pretty forgiving, just like the Tatula and the SLX DC in skip mode. We'll do a few more and then we'll try to dial these brakes down. Oop, that was a bad skip. Okay, had some uh, overrun there. Okay, 
some more overrun. All right, one more on the max brake setting. Ooh. Okay, one more. That was a bad skip on my part. Okay, that was a decent one. Had a small overrun there. All right, let's start dialing these brakes down, see how low we can go. I'm gonna go down two clicks. All right, so the spool was pretty controlled up until when the bait stopped and I didn't stop it with my thumb. All right, that was a bad skip on my part, but the reel was pretty forgiving. It's a nice little skip there. Stopped it with my thumb. So let's go down two more clicks. So that means we are on number nine. Oh crap, really bad skip on my part. The blow up wasn't too bad. Oh, okay. All right, so pretty much like any other reel, if you get a good skip where the bait skims across the water freely, then you won't get an overrun. But with the Pro SP, since I have the spool tension set this way, you definitely have to stop the spool with your thumb once the skip ends. See, so that was a bad skip and we had a pretty decent overrun there or blow up. All right, let's crank the brakes down two more clicks. All right, so had a decent skip, but I was too busy admiring it and didn't stop the spool with my thumb and got a backlash. Okay, let's go down two more clicks. So I have to admit, I remember what happened the first time I tested this reel for skipping. It was far less forgiving than it is now. Far less forgiving. Okay, we'll go down two more clicks. So we are on, well, we are in between six and seven. So I guess six and a half. All right, so spool was controlled even with that bad skip. All right, so that was my fault. I didn't stop the spool fast enough and had a backlash. Okay, we're gonna go down to the lowest brake setting that has an orange number, which is gonna be five. We're just gonna go all the way down to the lowest number on the skipping zone. Let's see what happens. Oh shoot, so that was a nice little skip, but I swung too hard and the spool speed got up and this is what happened. Okay, we'll do a couple more skips with the brake dial on five. All right. Okay, so that backlash was so bad that I had to pull off pretty much almost all the line off the spool, and this is how much is left. Okay, so what I'm gonna do now, is I'm gonna try to do a couple of skips where I thumb the spool all the way through the cast. 
All right, I guess my thumb pressure wasn't enough. All right, ugly skip, but the thumb, but my thumb stopped any kind of overrun. Okay, decent skip. Thumb was on the spool the whole time. All right, right there, my thumb was not on the spool. So it was definitely my fault, but I think you guys get the picture. But I think you guys are starting to see the pattern here. That is with the Tatula SV and the SLX DC. A lot of those times I could go completely thumb free throughout the whole cast, even once the lure stopped skipping. So right there, I did use my thumb during the whole cast. And keep in mind, I'm an amateur skipper. If you can see, this is the places that I fish. There's literally nothing to skip under. So I never really had the need to develop skipping skills. So my skipping stroke is definitely not very consistent. My release is not very consistent. I think I would do better though if there was some kind of an overhang here. It would help me mentally to be able to skip better. Okay, we're gonna do one more and then I'm gonna show you guys something. Okay, so thumb wasn't strong enough to stop that backlash. And I think this is a pretty deep one, as you guys can see. Okay, so right now you might be thinking that, you know, the Lose Pro SP is not able to skip thumb free, which is something that's very attractive for a beginner skipper. But this reel actually can skip thumb free. And let me show you how to do that. First of all, I'm gonna crank the brakes back up. Then I'm gonna tighten up the spool tension. Luckily it's got a clicker. Now the spool tension, as you can see, is tight enough to where the lure can hit the water and there is no overrun. So now at this point, I'm going to tighten it up one more click. There we go. So if my memory serves me right, we should be able to skip thumb free with this spool tension setting. All right, so that was a bad skip where the first skip was right there. The second skip was like 25 feet away and spool still controlled. All right, we'll do a few more. Now granted, these are not very long skips. They're going probably about almost 30 feet. But we're going completely thumb free. All right, so let's turn these brakes down. We'll go to the middle of the skip zone at seven and a half. See if we can still go thumb free. Yep. All right, bad skip there. Normally it would have caused a blow up on the spool, but at this setting, no problem. All right, so this setting is pretty much forgiving all my skipping mistakes. So now what I've done was I've turned the external brake setting to the lowest it can go and still be in the skip zone, which is the number five. And let's see if we can still skip thumb free.
Yep. Yep. All right, so that was a, a bad skip where the first skip was like right there and still no backlash or overrun. So there we go. Now you know how to set up your Pro SP, probably any centrifugal brake reel, to be able to skip with no backlash or overrun and do it thumb free. And that was a horrible skip, but still no backlash. All right, one more. All right, guys, there we go. The Skipping test of the Team Lose Pro SP skipping and pitching reel. And let's go back home and wrap this video up. Okay guys, so I'm back from the water and I'm just gonna go ahead and say it, but I don't think that this Pro SP is gonna be any better than any other Lose reel with the same braking system for skipping. And in fact, the only thing I think that is special about this reel when it comes to skipping it's going to be the shallow spool now, i don't know if you paid any attention during the video or not but when i did have a backlash or overrun some of those backlashes when i cleared them up i pulled almost all the line off of the spool and when i first took the reel out a few weeks ago to do this skipping video I distinctly remember having to pull all the line off the spool to clear out a backlash. So basically Luz gave this reel a shallow spool so when you do get the inevitable backlash it won't be so deep as to ruin that whole spool of line. But as you can see you can actually go thumb free with this reel if you tighten the spool tension enough but I believe that's going to be the case with pretty much any reel out there. But once again, it's not a knock on this reel. Of course, skipping is going to be pretty much angler ability. So the better you are at skipping, the less problems you're going to have. But in the end, I don't believe that the Pro SP is quite as forgiving for beginner skippers as the Tatula SV or the Shimano SLX or Corrado DC in the skipping mode but if you remember at the beginning of the video you can see that I was able to cast an average size jerkbait probably around 40 plus yards and I still had plenty of line left on the spool so this reel is way more versatile than its super shallow spool lends you to believe and this is probably going to be an overall more versatile reel than reels like the Tatula SV or the Shimano Corrado 70 MGL due to the fact that this reel will be able to bait finesse much better than either of those two reels. So yeah, here we go guys. Sorry to keep you waiting on the skipping test on the Luz Pro SP. I think I was pretty fair in the assessment of his skipping abilities. But as an all-around reel, actually this reel is probably one of my favorites at the moment because it is so comfortable to palm, it looks so good, and it can bait finesse with the best, most expensive Japanese bait finesse reels for a fraction of the cost. And you know how I love to bait finesse. So there we go, guys. The Team Lose Pro SP. Do not let the super shallow spool fool you. This reel is actually a lot more versatile than you probably gave it credit for. All right guys, thanks a lot.